Mr. Trevor Nice, how are you, sir? I'm not too bad. <laughs> Struggling along. <laughs> uh, yep. Good. I'm a, Wex a Wexford man now. Wexford. Yeah, a Wexican from Leitrim to Wexico, this, this call. Yeah, yeah. And how, yeah, well, you, you look like you're you have lots of space behind you there. This yeah, new, new studio set up. Yeah, we're out in the country and um, there was an old uh, wreck of a, a garage and uh, I converted it to a, a studio. First time in my life to actually have a proper studio and sort of separated from the house. So, mm. um, and yeah, no, I've done quite a bit of stuff. Uh, we've been here two years now, just on. So when I think back, you think you're not really doing that much. And then you say, oh, actually, I did this, I did that. We got the auto to face stuff out. I put a theater. Sure double album i did music for a couple of films so amongst many other things brilliant and, um, so yeah we're cracking on with the devil spine band now on honor and myself so Great. you know so it's kind of it's handy for us to have a vocalist living so we don't have to worry about <laughs> spreading plagues <laughs> that's fantastic yeah you're yeah. an honor yeah yeah so yeah and and the so the devil spine was that's you've been doing that quite a while i know that you know the, 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 it's, it's had the various incarnations hasn't it yeah um i can't remember when the first one was could be more probably more than 10 years ago mm. that's the buto i you know i was working with the japanese buto dancers that was the sort of the la the last big one we did mm -mm. um i suppose the project art center about six years five six years ago was the last with the sculptures and the whole caboodle oh, and oh. bringing people over and babysitters and <laughs> nightmares but uh with the full with the band um and actually i'm i i you know you probably got questions to ask but oh, oh. I, I was kind of saying because tom is playing with us in that yeah and in a way he's a bit of a link between you know a lot of things that we've been do both doing mm. and i'm trying to figure out was this when did was he playing with the animals when i went to play with you or yes, did, yes. was i playing with you and then he came in or because he was could, yeah he was playing with us he played with us um before yeah, yeah. tom jamison we're talking about here of course yeah yeah and because that's how and we tom and the late great finn yes joined yeah. for a couple of, a couple of years and actually they were of for gay and myself were actually one of the best that was one of the best bands versions of it in retrospect so, wow. yeah so i mean i maybe the best thing to do is just go kind of chronologically i mean what how did you get into rock and roll for night jesus <laughs> well, you know, yeah, i was listening to on the radio today uh, or actually, no. Philip Begley, engineer friend of ours, he mm. he put um, uh, a track today, and you know, like we were just saying, uh, you know, there's things like art and other things maybe don't bring back memories like music does in such a beautiful way. But he 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 shared the Upsetters, oh, Django yeah. returns, oh. and I said, oh my God, I remember that. So it's mm. 1968. So I was 14 living up in Belfast um, and the troubles were just knocking off. So uh, I, was, I didn't come down to Dublin till 1970. So when you heard this uh, thing, well, I don't even think they called it reggae then, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was, you know uh, uh, Desmond Decker and yeah. uh, all that, you know, it mech Israelites, all that. But... Anyway, I, I, the memories came flooding back mm. and gathering on a Sunday, listening to Top of the Pops around the radio in somebody's house and being waiting with bated breath to see what had gone up or down, you know, whether it was, you know. But, um, I was kind of more into, as well as having piano lessons, I was more a guitar mm. man, man, really. You know, I love Fleetwood Mac, the Peter Green version. Wonderful, Manalipi and Oh Well and Albatross, all that, and Free, you know, of course, <laughs> <laughs> Wishing Well, <laughs> yeah, all right now, all right yeah. now, 
But all, all, all of those records, you know, it's amazing when I, I, I have still have a lot of them in the early Led Zeppelin. I was such a fan of that stuff, you know. Um, re- and I, when I look at the age I was, I go, I hadn't a fucking clue what I was listening to, really. <laughs> no. And this is not to mention T Rex, of course. You're, I know you're a big, yeah, I am, big fan. And um, it, it took me a while. It was a while before the Velvet Underground and all that <laughs> appeared on the horizon. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so I was doing piano lessons, and I, I, what was I? I said, "Oh yeah, time is tight." Booker T and the MGs. No, yeah, I no. had a very nice, I had a very nice piano teacher called Harriet Officer in the north. And she would encourage me to bring sheet music of stuff I liked. So this is, you know, 15, whatever it was. Time is tight, you know. And she, so she was delighted down, da, 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 on the left hand, as well as me doing the right. So, so and, you know, uh, the small faces, mm. the park. Great so she, I, I brought, I brought those, uh, those, you know, haven't heard them. And of course, when you played them from the sheet music, they never sounded anything like <laughs> what they were supposed to be. So that's when I started to, you know, say, oh, look at the way that chord. And then the Beatles, of course, and Stones. Beatles, I suppose, mainly. Mm. How, isn't that a, just playing one chord to another and saying, oh, that's just a beautiful thing that happens there. I don't know why, but that that beautiful thing wasn't happening for me for with Beethoven and Mozart. <laughs> so that was really, I suppose, the start of it. And yeah, because the Beatles used to, they actually took an interest in particular chords. Like they're going to do an intro, wham, we're going to hit you with something that you hadn't heard before. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the White Album is actually still one of my favorites. Uh, you know, all those sexy Sadie and uh, mm. I'm so tired. Uh, those, those sort of. Uh, incredible chord sequences mm, you know, how mm. could somebody come up with that going from this chord to that chord so um and i've always enjoyed i mean most of the time when i'm writing they would the stuff would come from chords chord movement and sound rather than me writing a melody mm. or i'm not and very very odd the word and if i did a few words they would always come from from the from the chords and the rhythm more than getting a melody or a or a piece of poetry out of thin air, you know. And what was the first bands then? How did you get into uh, like formally gigging? Or... Um, I did. I didn't. Well, I wasn't in any bands up in the north. So up till sixteen years old, and then we moved. That was a, the, the troubles. It was a bad mm. idea. I was delighted to get out of that place, you know, out of Belfast. Mm. Uh, and then it coming to, I often said that coming to Dublin was like reaching Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine Dublin in 1970. God. <laughs> dirty, dirty Dublin. Yeah. You know, uh, um, but then in going to school and youth clubs quickly, quickly hooked up with people. Oh, you can you play acoustic guitar. And I had, I got myself an old wreck of a Honer pianet. And um, so I was kind of played folk clubs, Fox Rock Folk Club. They had a thing going. So I do that with guys, a uh, couple, couple of them are dead now, but doing Neil Young, Bob Dylan songs, uh, Leonard Cohen, all that sort of thing. But so that's, and a few Beatles songs. And, and we were beginning to write stuff even wow. at that stage, you know, uh, there's no records, <laughs> but uh, and then and then gradually, gradually, and then I, I suppose the first what I might call proper band was Naima, with which was a jazz fusion thing. So I went quickly from Neil Young and uh, and um, Bob Dylan straight to John McLaughlin and Chick Corea. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, with a, with with quite a lot of yes and Genesis. Genesis actually probably were of, at that time uh, was my favourite band of all. Mm. I remember going to see them in the stadium, a very famous gig where he wore the fox's head and the red dress, Peter Gabriel, for the first time. Mm. Wow. And 
you know, the band didn't even know what was going to happen. But that he, to see him with a fox's head and a long red dress playing the flute and a bass drum, I said, that's now the sort of thing I wouldn't mind getting involved in. And of course, they had all the Yes and Genesis keyboards like going up the wall, you know, yeah. surrounded by seven keyboards. Yeah. Rick Wakeman with a, you mm. know, nice, beautiful long blonde hair and a golden cape. So I kind of would have aspired to a bit of that. And then met uh, Garvin and Andrew Boland and yes. Fran, Fran Breen. So that was Naima. And so we'd, we'd it turned, Garvin, I suppose, turned us all on to the Mahavishnu Orchestra. And so it was real sort of intricate, play, you know, to figure yeah. these things out, play yeah. them, Chick Corea, Return to Forever, um, Soft Machine. So, oh, you know, always with the rocky, the rocky end of jazz, if I can put it like that. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, and so that was pretty, I mean, when I listened to some of the stuff that we were attempting to play at 20 years old, I was going like, holy shit. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't even think to play it going near it now, you know? Right, right, because you just know too much about it. That's, that's the wonderful yeah. thing of being 20. You, you just, yeah. you, you're fearless. And, yeah. and, and, and the gay then comes into the picture. Yeah, I, I went to Holland with... The, probably the worst name band in the universe. No buckets. <laughs> no buckets. <laughs> it was a um, that was another jazz rock jazz fusion thing with you know, um, sort of we were kind of doing. I was I was writing music for all these things, you know, mm -hmm. um, as well as us doing covers of uh, you know that was Soft Machine, Henry Cow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More, more all kind of well off left of the center stuff yeah proggy and, slightly uh, proggy edged oh yeah this and then um i would have been a, the progger in the midst of the <laughs> as <I> jazzers <laughs> and um anyway so then no book it's got the chance to go to i oh i was in metropolis as well and oh yeah I, I played with um I played with all sorts of other Tom Moore and Stack. Do you wow. remember Stack? Yes, yeah. and and Garvin was in that. Was was Garvin? Was Garvin? Yeah, yeah. So Garvin's and Garvin's still and, and again Garvin's been. We were. We, I mean, we are hitting the. Uh, we'd be hitting the nearly fifty years playing together. Amazing, you know. Amazing is right. Right. Nineteen seventy four was Naima started. So yeah, it's only three years. It'll be. 50 years yeah ago. yeah um, and um and then we got the chance with no buckets to go to holland so and then so i went that's i relocated over to holland and then i came back to do a few things and then i did a demo with uh Kay and terry woods which never was released and that's where i met gay first and then there was a yeah, a bit of to and fro mm. and then she eventually came over to Holland, and that was the we, we she joined a band I was in. I was doing school concerts, making good bit of money over there. These just touring the we were the pop history of pop band. We we rock up to a to a school and do play an hour to about. 1200 kids and they'd get them all out then they bring another 1200 in so we went that was kind of playing all from the blues right up to at the time um punk and ska wow. so we, we used to finish with smash their brains in by linton Quasey johnson <laughs> oh. we have the whole school up dancing so that i had good, good fun and made a lot of money for a brief period there and some good, good friends, and eventually that morphed into Auto da Fe. So it started right, its life right. in Holland. Then we came back and did a few tours here, not very successful. And then with the second one, we ended up we stayed here in 1980. And then, um, well. Well, I, I'm amazed at how you, how much you, you, you retained of your recordings of Auto de Fe through that, you know, that recent collection you've um, 
yeah you've assembled that you had so much old material from that period yeah well i you know my hor a bit of a hoarder so i took a long time to get a lot of the tapes i knew that you know there was tapes from holland and you know how they survived i don't know because they were in damp houses and oh. there were suitcases and all sorts of places that they shouldn't have survived but um they bake um, them, don't they, Trevor? They they bake the Dara, yeah, Dara Winston. Dara Winston, great, yeah. He was so telling he, me a bit he, about it. He did a great, he did a, a terrific job. So we went through. I had many different versions of them. So, and then we we went. We just went through them, and surprisingly, most of them held up very well. We did a little bit of editing. They didn't need too much fiddling with, you know, at mm, all. Mm, mm. And. Um, but that's all that I, I'm working on a new and a live. I have a whole heap of stuff, live stuff, actually with Finn and Tom playing, and I co wrote with them. So that's the next wow. one. Sort of there's that's another, there's another 50, 40, 50 songs of live. We have lots of live recordings, and some of them are pretty good. Great. So that'll be coming out next. <laughs> that's good. I look forward to hearing that. That's That sounds yeah. great. Uh, yeah, just I, you know, if you came in here, people are like, "Oh my God, look at these boxes and boxes and boxes of shit." <laughs> but I kind of say, I know where I need, I need that tape or that th that little. Oh yes, and I can I can I can now sort of find things without too much difficulty. It looks like, you know, what you call them, Francis Bacon studio mm -hmm. sometimes. But uh, there's order in there, uh, secretly yeah, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> And you're involved with us then with the animals, like um, you produced some of the material that's on the the uh, mission sessions, uh, in yeah. particular uh, Polar Bear and, and that song Bird. Um, yeah, I love Bird. It's one of my favourites. But um, I know everybody says it, but you're a bit of a nail genius with the words. <laughs> <Bird. laughs> Thank you, Trevor. I like yeah. The song had been kind of knocking around for a while, but we never made any attempt to record it. So um, that session in in um, Paul Gurney's in in, yeah. uh, in Longford. Um, so you, yeah. were you were playing piano on it and and generally kind of helping with the structure and the arrangement and and, and the, yeah. the plan, the great plan. Yeah, yeah. No, I I I can remember when we got those, even the rough rough uh yeah off the yeah. board mixes i said wow these are terrific songs i mean there's another one that you haven't put out just which i you know i always thought was going out yes where, yeah the going out is is is, uh, is is as you were saying there that that's one in the on the back boiler we've been working on it again and we oh. actually have some uh, interesting things going on with it it's it's yeah it's, i love used to love play, playing it um, yeah that's right. And, uh, white, white bread and sugary tea. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, that you you kind of blown my cover just with that one there. <laughs> there was there was a few things. There was quite a few tunes from that era that I think are worth going back to, like cats and yeah. dogs and uh, oh, yeah. And there were quite a few, but uh, polar bear was the other one. And and the thing that a lot of people have made no remarks on is uh, Paddy Cox, the CIE. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's uh, you, yeah. God knows how many times did I hear him, and we the whole train would just crack up laughing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is he going to say today? You know. Yeah, he was wonderful. Oh, I know. I think I had I had I had about six or ten recordings of him. You know, because I just he say here he comes quick. Get, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I think I just had an old cassette player yeah. record and like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, and did he nice. like make the announcement? Well, it wasn't over a PA. It was actually he was actually announcing it in the in the carriage, was he? Oh no, it was but the PA. That's that's on the PA. All oh, right, through right. through the um, you know, we all got us. So the whole train would be just uh, collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> and he said a sort of sing song delivery. It was like rap. Yeah. It was like yeah. to the rhythm of the train, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think we did try. I did record the train. There's a few wonderful. What they call sidings, mm. where, where as, as you kind of say it, the train rattling and rolling. Um, 
that, uh, but I don't think we can get the rhythms, the tempos to fit. Right, right. Because Paddy just fit it. There was no cheating or time stretching or anything. Oh, I know, yeah. I get I got, well, the minute I heard this, I got a great laugh, you know. Because I, um, because, uh, yeah, and I, it's, as I, I was saying, to, when talking to Honor about my hours with you guys over, mm. you know, between gigs and recording mm. and trying things out and all the rest of it, like great times. I remember them fondly. I was just telling her of when you lived in Ross's Point. Oh, yes. <laughs> And the only entrance possible yes. was, through, was through the side window. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, many people regarded that, that as, the, as the primary. Front cover. So yes. what, you, oh, no, you have to come in this way. <laughs> the, the mission was a bit like that as well. It was the, that, that era of the, everybody came. Yeah. When, uh, you know, but, um, oh, I, I have such um, fond memories of all of, you know, all the my Sligo, uh, roots, you could call them. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we did a lot of gigs, you know, over the years. Yeah. Um, um, and then myself and yourself did musicals as well. So we, oh, we yeah. were, <laughs> for that, we did West Side Story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get the, uh, the uh, what do you call them, into the end, Sonic, the floppy yeah. disks. That's right, the, EP, the EPS and Sonic. Yeah. Load, load, <laughs> quick song, song's coming. <laughs> yeah, oh we, we were in a competition once down in, in Galway. I mean, it, it was, um, I think it was the fun company uh, production of West Side Story, and everything was being sequenced. Now, in those days, to explain to people of another generation, we have to say that these were uh, sequencers, but they were all loaded off of the old style floppy disk. And if the thing went down, it had to reboot. So it just took a long time. So some of the cast <laughs> tripped over the leads. In the middle of the show, and the woman that was out there doing it, uh, she was at was a, a high drama moment in West Side Story, when she was about to some, you know, she was foretelling the the, the doom that was about to come, and there was no music, so she had to start improvising and praying and making up <laughs> things and singing little songs, and there was us that had plugged the power back in, waiting for the for the music and the oh, orchestra to return. Oh God, yeah. When they would seize up, I still have my EPS is sitting over here. It came out of a box, and it has. I haven't tried to get it working again. I don't know whether I should, but there be some. There was a, like you know, each keyboard has its own sounds, but they were a, that was a bit of a nightmare working in with sequencers in those days. Like when in a pub where they'd switch on the uh, the dishwasher. It would suddenly the electricity power would drop and the freaking sequencer would seize <laughs> up in the middle of the sun. Uh, you have to, don't wash any cups. <laughs> <until we're in. laughs> Tell me your Philip Linnet story, Trevor. I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, uh, um, well, we met him. And, um, he first we were in we were in actually doing demos with Auto de Fe in Windmill. We had a manager and he said he'd fork out for us to just do three songs. So while we were in there, Philip was in um, doing it, doing something of his own. And he had he knew Robbie Brennan, the drummer from Skid from Skid Row times. Robbie played with Skid Row briefly. You know, uh, the, the lineup changed quite a bit and Philip was going to be the singer. And then he was out and out of that. So they knew each other. And so uh, we were, we were, we were in just doing our thing. And and, and Robbie said, well, "I get Philip to come in and have a listen." So he came in, and he 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 knew Gay as well from the over in living over in London, the Woods Band and all that. So it was a kind of a, an instant liking, and he he said, oh, "Wow!" And, and he had just actually not long started experimenting with more electronic stuff you know yellow pearl um and you know all, all that is solo albums yes and he, he, so he had kind of stepped into you know the electronic world and was well you know so it sort of suited him in a way style wise in a funny way so he tried he tried his best to 
um, do a mix uh, on, on the uh, on the tracks we were working on, but they they sort of got so far and they said actually we'd probably be better starting from scratch rather than him actually the a few of them the not the mix not mixes he tried to do because he it sort of left halfway through the thing it didn't really work out I, a few of them are on the CD but they're not too bad in fact but uh, he said the next time you guess you 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 can get a studio and you've got a new song so we had November November. And we got we got this audition. Uh, we had to make a backing track in those days for RTE. Imagine they paid you to go into w uh, Westland or somewhere to make a backing track. So while he said, "Oh, you, he said, well, while you're in there, do a backing track, and we'll lash down a few songs." So basically, RTE unwittingly paid for the recording. So while we had everything um, set up to make these backing tracks. Uh, we put down November, so he, so we very, we did that very quickly. We were, we had been playing as a at gigs, so it was a well formed thing. Mm, yeah. And um, so then, so then he um, he just applied his production skills very quickly with it and sang on, and then we then sort of stayed stayed with us for four singles um, uh, and produced, you know, Man of Mine. Bad experience, and something's gotten a hold of my of my heart. Wonderful. And uh, and um, and then and then through that time, then we were. He was doing a tour with the solo band, so he said, "Look, while while you're you're," he asked myself and Robbie to join his band. So that was such a that was probably the biggest thrill of my life ever, you know. <laughs> Because I'd actually a friend of mine, and he's he's dead now. All the way back to the start of the conversation, playing Neil Young songs, and he saw he saw an ad in the Melody Maker. Wanted for Irish rock band keyboard player wanted for Irish rock band, and he said, "I know who that. That's Thin Lizzy." And he said, "You should go for that." <laughs> I said, I, "I don't. Even, I have a Honer fucking PNS. I don't even have a Nori." He said, they'll, they'll buy you one, you know, you just go along and you're Irish and all the rest of it. And I, I was too timid to go after it. So what a turn. It's almost like how I wished I had the, I sort of gone for it then. Mm -hmm. you know? as, as shortly after that, they got the keyboard player into Thin Lizzy, you know. But anyway, what a remarkable turn the suddenly yeah, I'm, in his, I'm in his band like i couldn't have wished for anything more playing you know and but uh and that was a big you know big production situation we rehearsed in west westland studios and um you know massive pa lights and all but we did this completely mad tour of ireland to glenn playing in glenn column kill and emmy vale and oma big Barns of places, you know, but uh, anyway, yeah, that I, I remember describing at the end of us coming home as if I'd crossed the Alps on um, on my hands and knees. I was that. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, there was a few substances involved. Oh goodness me! In the journey. Yes. <laughs> and, and, but, and, yeah, and, uh, and then uh, yeah, so and then he. We were going to do a few other things. He, the, the, something's gotten a hold of my heart. You know, I went over and stayed over there with him in his Kew Gardens place. And I, it became friendly enough, but I mean, not super close friends or anything like that. Yeah. But he, he was a gent, to me anyway, he was kind, benevolent, never got, never asked for one single cent for all the stuff he did with us. Um, and put us on, got us a manager who helped us get the thing in the, on the airplay charts in England and, you know, like really let the band take off because it was oh. through those singles. So we, you know, we were really working hard through those early eighties times um, with gigs and playing over in England. We just, we really, we really just said, we really just were Irish, Ireland and the UK. Oh. We did, it didn't, it did just, and we, nearly cracked us in the UK. We got great airplay, but we had a bit of a dose of a manager and just oh. it wasn't followed up with the gigs at the right time and all that. So well, that's um, 
fantastic stories, Trevor. I know we're kind of we're trying to sort of keep these to a half hour. I have one other topic I wanted to get onto, and sort of jumping okay. around like mad. And please uh, forgive me. Was uh, I mean honor and Dorothy Parker and oh, yeah. all that that story. Yeah. Um, well, and there's a, a, a funny loop, little loop back to when I when I saw Susan singing again. <laughs> yes, Susan guys. Rowland. Yeah. yeah, she she was involved in those sessions that we did. It was a bit of a singer controversy at the time. Can I put it like that? Yes, yes. And Susan was a uh, was she was she was going to sing nearly everything. I think at one mm. point. Okay. And um, but I remember getting on really well with her, and then I don't know how I I had started right one song had sort of appeared in the auto de fe time, and then I had then I wrote another one, another one, another just one by one, and eventually there was sort of four songs, and then I with my interest in Dorothy Parker, I directed a couple of I directed a play. With Susanna Derrickson and Karen Egan um, in Bewley's, and we I used the songs throughout it. So, oh. so suddenly there was four songs, and then, uh, and then it got to, then I wrote a few more six, and then it was like, um, I can't remember how Susan was in the loop anyway. Oh, oh. So she was, she was actually, we did some gigs. We did a gig in the Spiegel tent, and one in the sugar club and that it kind of just petered out a bit then but we had a nearly i didn't have quite a full show of material and then it just went to sleep again i just said whoa and then uh, i met honor on a we were marching around the time of the like one of the the onslaughts on palestine on gaza yeah that the Israelis made that which is still going on or sorry to say they're still mm. pestering the life out of those people and uh, so we became uh, I, I was on quite a few marches in support and I met Honor she was hot uh, uh, and funnily enough I'd never really met her before Pete Cummins Fla Cowboy introduced us and then we just got on very well very quickly and she said, have you got, uh, what are you doing? And I said, actually, I have this stuff and uh, I wrote over the years, Dorothy Parker. So um, she knew a little bit about Dorothy Parker. And then when I gave it to her, she said, don't give this to anybody else. <laughs> so we started working for many months. I changed the keys, changed the this, changed the that. And I wrote then another half a dozen new ones to add to them. So suddenly there was a, the guts of a show mm, and, mm. and, um, and here we are. And here we are. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and then, and she's become a sort of an, an honorary member of the Devil's Spine Band. Oh, I well. see. I see. Wow. So, um, but that, that's, uh, yeah. Um, but the, let's say the, all the initial, the initial ideas. There was a lot of uh, Susan did help so much in the early stages, oh. and you know she's a terrific singer, as you know. She's and brilliant, a lovely, a lovely uh, woman. Yeah, yeah. So, she it, it's great on the animals uh, on this one because she's got a chance in, to to share the. I mean, uh, to share the the limelight with Barry and as regards the lead vocal, yeah. you know. So I mean, yeah. Both terrific. yeah, yeah, and. Um, yeah, but you know, it's we're all it's this this thing of not playing a gig for so long is weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is just very so odd, strange. so strange. Yeah. Uh, we're doing some sort of a little podcast thing next uh, or in the coming week, so I've taken out the my, my cats couldn't understand it when I took out the guitar and <laughs> cranked it up. They they ran out of the house in horror. <laughs> but a sight to my personality, they didn't know. <laughs> Oh, oh no, not, not an amplifier. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like all these, you know, they, these they, these sort of events, like you, you know, getting your record out, getting our mm. out of the play, all these things. They sort of where it, it is an online event, but it mm. ain't the same. <laughs> and um, 
No, it ain't the same. It ain't the same. And not only that, it's it's being around the other. I mean, because our musician buddies are our family, you know. Yeah. Being being close to them around, you know, around them, uh, the music is kind of not. I wouldn't say a byproduct, but it's it's it hugely important. Has, yeah. It's hugely important, you know, that we're seeing and. Because that's you know where the news comes from, and oh, how are you? you know? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. So, and even just little help outs here and there, and so on and so forth. All these supports, uh, and this yeah. strange sense of everyone having moved into kind of isolation. Um, yeah, is, is, it's, it's unfortunate, but well, hopefully it will end. I mean, um, yeah, it's been. Doing... I, sorry, yeah, I'm ask you about the bedlam suitcase. He, was a, another one of your projects which you know for... yeah um yeah we, we were we were ready to go as you know and i mean yourself and honor were helping us out with some thoughts about gigs and so on all of that of course yeah is, it, it was lost uh, we, we did do a few gigs a handful of gigs um and then um so yeah. uh, we, we we hoped to trevor you know um we had a terrific band and terrific um Love yeah. and support from everyone. We, we did a fund to, to get the album out. Um, the gig that you did, we saw on the sh in the Sugar Club was just terrific. Amazing, um, fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, you know, we, we, we don't, like yourself, I suppose, we don't know. There's this strange doubt in people's mind, I think, that we will yeah. come back, but let's hope we do. Yeah, I mean, I mean small... to normality that we can do gigs and in a theatre yeah, or whatever. The, the small gigs are the ones most at risk of never returning, you know? Um, I think because so few people can come in spaced out. But there again, we were looking at pictures from um, Australia and from mm. America, and there's people all sitting together, mask-free. So it can, will happen, you know? It seems like an yeah. impossible... That's, except some other variant of this damn mm -hmm. thing will appear, scupper it all. Well, I think that's a positive vibe, Trevor. I think we'll, we'll end the official yeah. conversation at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Get on to the unofficial. Now, thanks a million, and thanks for doing this, and it's fantastic. Right. That was good fun. Yeah.